بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والا وبعد There is no doubt, ikhwan, for the qari and the one who reads the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah azza wa jal lays down qawaid and principles throughout the book of Allah azza wa jal and there are a number of themes that repeat themselves as Allah Azza wa Jal reiterates them for the believers as they read. And those commands and awamir, or nawahi as the case may be, commands and prohibitions, formulate qawaid and principles for the life of the believer. And so over the next few days, inshallah, we want to look at some of those principles that are related to the life of the believer. Those verses that formulate principles that relate to the life of the believer and they are considered principles in that Allah Azza wa Jal repeats them in various ways in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. And one of those such commands is that which Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned in an ayah that occurred in Surah Al-Baqarah wherein Allah Azza wa Jal mentions وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ لا تعبدون إلا الله وبالوالدين إحسانا وبذي القربى واليتامى والمساكين وقولوا للناس حسنا That Allah Azza wa Jal mentions that when we took the mithaq when we took the covenant from Bani Israel that you should not worship except Allah and of course there is a qaida first and foremost the affair of the establishment of Tawheed and then Allah Azza wa Jal commands, and this command occurs throughout the Quran, and we'll revisit it insha'Allah. But that is the command to be dutiful to one's parents. ihsana, That you are dutiful to your parents. Then Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, وَبِذِلْ qurba, And with those who are near to you in relation. وَالْيَتَامَى And to the orphan. والمساكين, and to those who are poor. And then Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna, And that you should say good to the people. You should speak well to the people. قُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna, And as some of the scholars of recitation, they mention that there is a qira'a of the ayah, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حَسَنًا وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حَسَنًا That you should speak well or you should say good to the people. And this affair then is one that we see reiterating itself throughout the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. That the Muslim, the Mu'min is tayyib in relation to his kalam. Tayyib in the manner in which he carries himself. Tayyib in how he deals with the people. His interactions, his mu'amala, he is good. And this affair of him speaking well to the people, Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned it in various ayat in the Quran. Alongside prohibiting speaking ill and harshly to individuals and repelling individuals. Allah Azza wa Jal alongside that has mentioned, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna, That you should say good to the people. And that affair as the people of knowledge have mentioned, revolves around two main affairs, two main issues. One of them, that one speaks husna in relation to the hay'a, or in relation to the manner in which the speech is constructed, the words that you use, your manner of address, the choice of wording. قُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna, And secondly, husna in relation to the ma'na, the meaning of that which a person says. That is utterance, it carries good meaning. So alongside good construction in relation to what you say, likewise good meaning. And that is that you don't say something that may have a good construction, but actually it's sarcastic. Or that you make a statement that is condescending, though the construction may apparently be good. Rather, 
that that husna is good in terms of its construction, good in terms of its meaning. And Allah has commanded us with that throughout the Quran. وَقُلْ لِعِبَادِي يَقُولُ الَّذِي هِيَ أَحْسَنِ Say to my worshippers that they should utter that which is good. Tell them, my worshippers, command them. And of course the Prophet ﷺ was commanded with this to convey that to the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that they should say and utter that which is good. As it relates to one's parents, Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned, وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا When Allah mentions that indeed you should be dutiful to your parents, وَلَا تَكُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا Don't say uff to them. And la tanharhuma. And this affair of a nahar, it revolves around speaking ill, bad speech, either foul speech or the manner of speech. And in order to reiterate the affair of hay'a or the form and construction of the speech, and secondly, the meaning, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, وَلَا تَكُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ and don't say uff to them. And uff is something that in terms of its construction is a bad word, a bad statement. And it likewise has bad meaning. Because it, in, it, when one expresses it, it is an expression of disdain, of dislike, of upset, of displeasure. لا تقول لهما uff don't say uff to them wala tanharuhuma and do not speak in an ill manner to them and that is as it relates to the parents likewise as it relates to the people of the book do not Allah mentions la tujadil ahl al-kitab illa billati hiya ahsan don't argue with the people of the book except in a way that is better except in a goodly manner and so if they're disrespectful, then we rise above them. And that is not in any way, shape or form, weakness. Rather, it is ulu. It is nobility. It is exalted. It is something that is high. Something that Allah Azza wa has praised. It is not weakness. And so if they're disrespectful, or if they use statements that are derogatory, we don't use similar statements. We rise above them. And it raises the station of the believer. Rising above them. As, the, as it relates to the sa'il. As it relates to the one who comes and asks. Allah mentions the same nahar that Allah mentions. As it relates to the one that asks of you. Allah mentions. Don't speak down to them. Don't be derogatory to them. Because of the fact that they're lower than you. They don't have. They are less well to do. And so we are the haves and they are the haves not have nots. And so we speak ill to them. Look, the believer he rises above that. He's tayyib. He's one that does not look down upon the people. He doesn't disgrace the people. He doesn't mock the people. Rather his speech is good. His speech is tayyib. Tayyib when he speaks to his parents. Tayyib when he speaks to his wife. Tayyib when she addresses her husband. Tayyib when he speaks to his children. Even when they do that which is wrong. Then he corrects them and he disciplines them in a manner that is good. He doesn't swear and curse and utter foul statements. Rather he corrects them in a manner that is good. And so this affair then. وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna, Banu Israel were commanded with it. But it is not only a command to Bani Israel, rather it is a command to this Ummah. And that the people or the worshippers of Ar Rahman are those who walk in the earth humbly. There is nothing more beautiful than humility, than someone who is humble as strong and as powerful as he may be and has as much position that he may have and status and wealth he's humble she's humble 
That is something that is beloved to the nufus, beloved to the nafs. The nafs inclines towards it. And so Allah mentions, they walk upon the earth humbly. وَإِذَا خَاتَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا And when the jahilun or when the ignorant ones address them, they say salama. And as the scholars have mentioned, that is either that they literally say salam, or that they say qalu qawlan salama. That is, they either literally say salam, or they say a word of salam. Yani they say a peaceful word. They don't say a word that, that yani, uh, agitates. They don't utter statements that are reactionary. They remember who they are. And they remember that the believer, the mu'min, he has ulu in terms of his station and his qadr and his, his uh, mannerisms and adab. And he remembers the address of Allah Azza wa and the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to him. وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna. نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى يوفقنا وإياكم لما يحبه ويرضاه وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله